It was narrated that the man came to him in the presence of other companions and he said to him, Ya Rasul Allah, O Messenger of Allah, allow me to commit zina, allow me to commit adultery. Can you imagine if any of us would go to any Imam in any masjid, in any place on planet Earth and ask him for something like this, what will happen to us? What would be the reaction of this Imam? What would be the reaction of the community? But because the Prophet ﷺ opened that space, that safe zone for people to come forward and inquire about their struggles, the man didn't find it heavy or didn't feel ashamed to come and tell the Prophet ﷺ, look, I'm stuck with this addiction. Give me permission to commit it. And the Prophet ﷺ did not rebuke the man. He didn't even say haram in that context, in the context of that story. He didn't even tell the man that this is haram. But rather, because he knew, he knew that the man knew that it is haram. And he's not coming to know whether it's halal or haram anyway. He's coming to find a solution. And this is what we are lacking in our community. We talk a lot about what is halal and what is haram, but we don't facilitate some methodologies and strategies for people who are stuck with haram activities and they don't know how to get out of it. And the Prophet ﷺ asked him questions after questions to make him realize on his own that he was asking about something really awful. He said, do you want this to happen to your mom? Do you want this to happen to your sister, to your daughter, to your aunt? And the man in every question would say, no, no, no. Then the Prophet ﷺ concluded, other people too don't like this to happen to their mothers, to their sisters, to their daughters and so on.